Hello everybody and welcome to Sterling Channel 19. We are here for the home opener of Sterling High School Baseball as the 0-1 Sterling Knights are taking on the 3-0 Eastern Vikings. Glad you're with us here at the home opener. Again, Sterling 0-1 Eastern 3-0. It is a very, very chilly morning here at Sterling High School, but we are going to bear through it. As we're going to try and bring you some baseball here today. I'm Brian McLernan, joined by Ben Nicholas here in the booth, and it's going to be yet again a very, very cold morning. Sterling coming off of a 7-1 loss as they played in the Camden County Tournament. In terms of the uh, history between these two teams, Eastern has won the previous five meetings, their last meeting dating back to April 22nd of 2023. That final score was 15 to nothing. Eastern just a very historically good team. They have scored double-digit runs against Sterling in four of the last five meetings. Eastern is a former Group 4 champ, and Sterling has not beaten Eastern over a quarter century, so not very much recent success between these two teams, but a very good start to this home opener. They're honoring the life of Jay Clark as Jake Clark's mom throws the first pitch. And I believe that is Jake who is catching it. It's both Jake's mom and I believe Jeremy out there as well. So very good to see the life of Jay Clark. Obviously Jake Clark member of Channel 19 as well as an outfielder for the Sterling squad under head coach here today. The infield crowds toward the mound as we are about ready to get underway. First pitch starting a little bit late. It's 11.05 right now. They had a nice pregame ceremony honoring the life of Jay Clark. We hear the national anthem performed by Victoria Bauer. On the sacks. On the sacks, yeah. That was really nice. We are about to get underway. The leadoff man is Vinny Melillo for Eastern. We are underway. First pitch taken high for ball one. Although it does not have an average this year. Required one walk in nine at bats. That one taken high, 2-0. Oh. The key here for Gagolski trying to get ahead of the count early. Obviously not doing that in this at bat. It's all about bouncing back. Here's the 2 0. That's in for called strike two and one. Yeah, the wind's really picking up right here. And Kogolski will step off the mound. Two balls and one strike to Melillo. Taken just upstairs, three and one. So it's three balls and one strike to the second baseman. And the three one from Gugolski. In there for a called strike. It's three and two. So three balls, two strikes. Another step off from Gogolski. Yeah, it's picking up considerably. Here's the payoff. Taken upstairs, ball four, so a walk to Melillo will give Eastern their first base runner of the day, and that'll bring up Ryder Holdeman. Holdeman batting 222 to start the year. an early mound visit here from catcher Nate Schwartz, who's behind the dish today. There's plenty of sports going on around us. We have some Little League soccer going on to both the left and the right of us. We have a lot of girls lacrosse practice going on as well. Throw 
back to first as Golski checks on Melillo. Yeah, me too. Golski ready. First pitch to Haldeman taken inside ball one. Haldeman again a 222 batter to start the year. One walk, two stolen bases. He's two for nine, two singles. It's an RBI as well. And they'll go back to first yet again. Looked to be dropped by the first baseman Casey Kazaneski for a moment. The umpire seems to be discussing something. I'm not sure what it is. Gagolski just pacing around the mound. Slow start to the game so far. I mean, you can't really play. I mean, might be easy. Yeah. Here comes the pitch from Gagolski. That one taken for a strike. It's 1 1. Sterling right now in double play depth, looking to secure double play. Melillo leads off of first. Gagolski looks back at him. Here's the 1 1. That's in for a strike. 1 and 2. Still haven't seen a swing of the bat from Eastern today. Very patient at the plate. One ball, two strikes, and the pitch. That one swung on and fouled out of play. Count remains at one and two to Ryder Haldeman. Two hits and nine plate appearances, both hits being singles. Melillo stands at first. And when taken way upstairs, Schwartz is able to do corral it. Two balls, two strikes. Wind is going to be very much a factor in this game, especially when it impacts the fly ball rate. see a lot of fly balls dying in the outfield today because it, it is blowing in. So we'd be very, very lucky to see one leave the yard today. Here's two balls and two strikes from Gagolski. And one ground and foul. So Haldeman staying alive. Golski really either trying to get a strikeout or force a double play of some sort. Two balls, two strikes. Here comes. That one taken upstairs. Runner goes from first. The throw to second base is in time to get him. Got the out at second base. A great tag by Jason Camardo at second base. The throw was a little offline, but Camardo was able to reach back and tag Melillo out for out number one. Yeah, he was just barely able to reach up and get that ball while keeping his foot on the base. That was a really crappy play. Great job by Camardo. Here's the pitch from Gagolski. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. I mean, technically that was a double play, but... You could say so. Got him with the breaking ball. First strikeout of the day for Gagolski. First strikeout of 2024 for Gagolski. And there's two gone in the inning. Now we're up to third on the lineup. That's going to be Sam Winsett, the batter. Batting 500 to start the year. He's the shortstop today for the Vikings. First pitch taken for a strike. Hat blowing off of Gagolski. He's going to be dealing with that a lot. I saw that have it about three or four times during warm-ups already, so. No balls and a strike to Winsett. And that one just missed. One ball and a strike. That 
that one foul back, one and two. And I mean, Eastern got off to a solid start, got their leadoff runner on, and and they were fighting with the, and Haldeman was fighting for a little bit in that at bat, but they got the runner out at second base trying to steal, and then the strikeout. So now nobody on base. That one taken upstairs. And now you have Winsett down to two strikes in this count. So if you can get either a strikeout or or any out, rather, that's pretty much a 1-2-3 inning, just an elongated one. Here comes the pitch. That one taking a bit upstairs. just fouled off by Winsett. So he stays alive. Yeah, he's going to be dealing with that quite quite a lot today. So the count is full to Winsett. And the payoff pitch. That one swung the line, fouled down the third baseline. Winsett stays alive. Winsett again, a 500 member to start the year. Four hits and eight plate appearances in RBI. Two singles, a double, and a triple. So he's got it all besides the long ball to start the season. Eight seventy-five slugging. Fly ball, shallow center field, and that's going to drop in for a base hit. Winsett will pump the brakes at first. Two out knock for Sam Winsett. That's the first base hit of the day for the Vikings. Just able to find a gap in between shortstop and center field, and that's going to bring up Anthony Cataldo. And two outs, a runner on for the Vikings. Nate Schwartz has already gunned somebody out at second base in this inning. Yeah, if you just heard that bang, that's from the middle school track meet happening behind us. Yeah, that's been going on for a while. We'll throw back to first. Nothing there. So again, here is Katana up at the plate. First pitch from Gagolski is taken for a strike. Both these teams playing their first games in the Camden County Tournament just yesterday. Sterling lost their game against Gloucester 7-1. And Eastern winning their game against Hidden Heights 15-0. No balls in a strike. Winsett thought about going, but he quickly ran back. Cataldo hitting 333 to start the year. Solid start to his season. Three hits and nine plate appearances. It's one ball and one strike to Cataldo. and one strikes two down here in the inning. Runner at first for the Vikings. Sterling got those two outs with a runner caught stealing and a strikeout from Gogolski. That one taken outside. Three balls and a strike to Cataldo. Ready? Here's the never mind, not a 3 1 as Kogolski will go back to first instead. Trying to find these easy outs here. Three 
three balls, one strike. Here comes the pitch. That one swung on, fouled away. Should be a full count here to Cataldo. Runner from first will be off and going on the pitch. Staying alive. Gugolski does have a walk in this inning, but does have a strike out. to be outside. Maybe it wasn't a full count. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Got him with the fastball. Two strikeouts in the inning for Anthony Gagoski. Ben, you can hold that thought. We'll head to the bottom of the first. No score. Scoring offense coming up. Viking to his key. Machowski, his first start this year, very solid. 65 pitches, four innings pitched, three hits allowed, two earned runs, three walks, did not record a strikeout. He's got a 3.5 ERA to start the year. And the best part about Sterling yesterday was they got off to an early 1 0 lead in the first inning, but really couldn't do much else afterwards as they lost that game 7 to 1. Sterling looking for a similar start to yesterday. Let's just hope they can finish the game. Yeah, it is. It's, it's going to be like this for the whole game, unfortunately. Not used to seeing conditions like this. Dean Collins, the leadoff batter for the Knights. First pitch taken down low, ball one. That one taken low, 2 0. know quickly to Dean Collins. I will be joined by Dan Leakin for the most part during this spring season. He'll be helping us out when he can. Uh, he has a jazz band though, so he's going to have to split time like I am as I'm playing uh, cross. That one taken for a strike, three and one. Oh, for sure. Balls and a strike, soft swing, bunt over to shortstop, throw over to first in time to get Collins. Yeah, nice job by Sam Winsett, the shortstop to charge over, make the play. There's one down in the inning for Jason Camardo. Ball one. One ball and a strike. 
Lombardo hitting 278 last year, 315 slugging ARBIs. He's not had a hit this season. And that's in there, one two. One ball, two strikes here from Machowski. That one just outside, two and two. start this season. 2-2. Two -two. Rounded over to short. Scooped up. Throw over to first. He's in time to get Camardo. So both plays going to the shortstop win set to start. There's two down here in the bottom of the first. Chez batting third here for the Knights, hitting 250 to start the year. Single and stolen base in his last game. Let's take the first strike. It's one for four. Chelsky looking for a one, two, three first inning. Solid last year, getting 271 with a 354 slugging, seven runs batted in. That one grounded softly back toward the mound. Machowski fields it, throws the first in time. It's a 1 2 3 inning for Machowski. Best case scenario for him. We'll head to inning number two with a scoreless after one here in Sterling's home opener. I woke up like 15 minutes before it happened, and when I felt it while I was just laying in bed, it was very weird. I don't even like, didn't even feel right. Like I wasn't even sure if it was an earthquake at first. No balls and a strike to Logan Dawson. One down low, 101. Grounder foul one and two. Like, <laughs> sound asleep. One ball, two strikes. Fly ball out to left, and that's going to get over the head of the left fielder. It's going to be extra bases for Dawson. He'll pull into second standing. It's a leadoff double here in the second inning for Logan Dawson, and the Vikings are running in scoring position to start the inning. First player on second base all day. So leadoff double for Logan Dawson, that one just snuck over Quentin Rosano's head out there in left field. Didn't get too far away from him. He was able to, able to get it in quickly, but not before Logan Dawson was able to speed into second for the leadoff double. So now runner in scoring position for the Vikings. As they look to get on the board first here this afternoon. It's Spencer Haldeman in the batter for the Vikings. And the first pitch shows Bunt. That one popped foul out of play. So the ball is in a strike to Spencer. That one batting 500 to start the year. First baseman for the Vikings today. Four hits and eight plate appearances for him. All four hits being singles. Also was a walk.
Golski ready as he looks back at second base. And we get time called. So the ball's in a strike. Two home. Logan Dawson led off the inning with a double. I've been shivering all game, and we're only in the top of the second. Any, anything I can do. Jensen would definitely be out here in a t-shirt and shorts right now, that's for sure. Shows Bunn again, that one popped up, and that's going to go foul as well. So 0-2 to Haldeman as he fouls both Bunn attempts away. Again, quickly 0-2 to Spencer Hallman. Runner at second base. Nobody out here in the inning. Nikolski looking to try and get out of the bit of a jam. Here's the 0-2. Out to first. That'll be a foul. So it remains 0-2 to Spencer Hallman. In hitting 500 to start his season. Four for eight, four singles. Balls, two strikes, here comes. That one fouled out of play. So free swinging here from Spencer Haldeman. Yes, I think I checked the weather. It's 50 miles an hour. Wind going on right now. I think that it's going to see a decent, nice day out. A bit overcast. Yeah, if the wind wasn't so bad, I wouldn't be complaining right now, honestly. Not too bad of a day for baseball. No balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. That one grounded over to short, fielded cleanly. Throw over to first is in time. So Haldeman grounds out. The runner moves to third. So now one down here in the second. And that'll bring up Luliucci. Rich Luliucci, 333 hitter to start the year. Kogolski. Two strikeouts on the day, both coming in that first inning. First pitch is in there for a strike. Uh, we have a bit of a lull in the wind right now. It's uh, not as... Yeah, a rare, rare calm moment, but it'll pick up most likely. Here's the 0-1. I'll take it down low. One ball, one strike to Luliucci. Logan Dawson standing at third for the Vikings as he looks to be the game's first run. And Gagulski steps off as Dawson got a big secondary lead. No one was covering third, though, so. Gagulski waits. He's ready on the pitch. Rounded over to first, backhanded. Casey Cos will tag the bag in time. The run does score, so it's an RBI for Rich Luliucci, and the Eastern Vikings take a 1 0 lead. strike to I believe it's Jack Bauer DH for today
Vikings with a one nothing two down. And the 0-2. Swing and miss. He got him. Over to first will complete the strikeout and retire the side. Eastern Vikings do get forward first with an RBI ground out from Rich Luigi in yesterday's game. Hit 273 last year, 295 slugging. And nine runs batted in. Pitch. That's in for a called strike. Sterling looking to answer back. They've trailed one nothing early here in inning number two. And the 0-1, that's going to get away from the catcher Cataldo. It's one and one. One ball, one strike to Lomax. Here it comes. Taking upstairs. And something I was impressed with the start of yesterday's game, the Knights' plate discipline was fairly good to start. It's just they weren't really able to get much going offensively. Again, just one run off three hits. Lone run being driven in by the batter of the Max. That's in there for a called strike. That pitch was fought off foul by Lomax's time is called. And again, Eastern, they have been they are former group four champions, and they've they scored double digits against Sterling in four of their last five meetings. Their last meeting against Sterling, they won 15-0. That was in April of 2023. April 22nd to be exact. Here's the pitch. Chopped. Slowly towards second, fielded cleanly, throw over to first is in time. Four out number one. All outs for the Knights being ground out so far. As they're through their first four batters of the game. Everyone's been suffering the same fate so far. Better now is Nate Schwartz. Schwartz last year, 364 average, 418 slugging, 12 runs batted in. That one skied out to shallow center field. In on it and making the catch is the center fielder Ryder Haldeman for out number two. So, yeah, he did. Send it in the air, just couldn't get a lot on it, but again, the wind definitely playing a factor in that. So now here is Golski, I believe, is takes the first pitch. Golski, a 333 hitter to start the year. That's in for a strike. Michalski at a 1-2-3 first inning, looking for the same here in the second. Swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes to Gogolski. Gugolski last year, 255 hitter, 340 slugging, nine runs batted in. Upstairs, two and two.
Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. He struck him now. First strikeout of the game for Wachowski. First of the year as well. It's another 1-2-3 inning for him. We have played two here at the Castle. It is one nothing. Out of the leadoff batter takes a strike, it's nothing to one, and Kapolsky's hat blows off yet again. upstairs to Kate Briotti. And the pitch for Kogolski. That one swung and grounded softly to the left of the mound. The throw over to first is going to get away from Kazaneski. It's going to go out of play. He's going to try for third. And is he going to hold up there? No, he's going to be forced to go back to second as the ball did go out of play. I would say it's, I wouldn't say it's more on Casey Kaz, that it's it's more on Anthony Gagolski in the throw. He did hesitate for a moment. I think you're right. So here's the leadoff man, Melillo. Throw back to second on time. Goski and Melillo ready. And the pitch, he shows bunt. Pulls back in time. Melillo walked in his last at bat, but was also caught stealing back in the first inning. Anything they can do to move the runner over. Shows Bunt again. That one fouled away. So Capriati at second base after the throwing error from Anthony Gogolski as the ball is grounded back to the mound. Hesitated his throw over to first. It went wide of Casey Kazaneski, and that allowed Capriotti to get to second base easily. He did try to go to third, but the umpire had to wave him back as the ball went out of play. Melillo is ready. Gagolski looks back, then pitches, gets the bunt down in fair territory, and everybody is going to be safe. So it's an infield single for Melillo. Also moves the runner over to third. So runners at the corners, nobody out here for the Vikings. Haldeman is the batter. He struck out in his last at bat. And the first pitch in there for a strike. It's nothing at one. But a prime opportunity here for the Vikings to add on to their lead. They have runners at first and third, nobody out. As Golski's going to have to try and pitch out of a jam. No balls and a strike. And he'll throw back to first to check on the runner there. Obviously nothing going. Eastern 3-0 on the year, trying to improve that record to 4-0. And hand Sterling their second loss. Sterling here in their home opener looking to get their first win of the season, their first win against Eastern in over a quarter century as well. 
That one taken for a strike. Throw goes to second as the runner goes, and the ball was dropped. So the runner is safe at second base. So now two runners in scoring position for the Vikings. Yeah, the throw did beat the runner, but the ball was dropped. So now runners at second and third, nobody out. Yeah, we see their gear probably a lot more than anybody because we're in there putting equipment away and getting equipment there all the time. Yeah, I don't know what it's. I don't know what they are. I just see them around a lot. But I don't ask any questions. Kugelski fires. That one's on ground to the third. It gets by into left field. A base hit. One run will score. They're going to hold the second runner over at third. That'll allow Haldeman to move to second. It's going to be an RBI for Haldeman. It's going to be 2 0 Eastern as well. Yeah, everyone else seems to be keeping their hats on the head, but Gogolski has a fun set of hair, so. Sam Wentz at the batter for the Vikings, singled in his last at bat. Since a high fly ball out the shallow right, catch is made, runner tags from third. The throw to the plate is high. That's going to sail over the head of Schwartz. That's going to allow Haldeman to move to third. It's a sack fly, and once it has an RBI, it's 3-0 Eastern. That was a good throw attempt by Jake Clark in the outfield, but just went a little bit over the catcher's hand. So one out here in the inning, run with third for... Anthony Cataldo, it's 3-0 Eastern. Cataldo struck out in his last at bat. I mean, the thing is, though, for them, they're able to run around and kind of that's in the dirt. Schwartz will try and go back to third, but it's not in time. Again, three nothing Eastern. Two runs scoring in this inning. One down, a runner at third. Nevin's gloves? Right now I have gloves on. I'm pretty sure these are Nevin's gloves because they don't really fit. I remember him talking Sorry, Nevin, if your gloves might be a little stretched out. That's it for a strike, breaking ball. He does. That was swung on and missed by Cataldo. He might be wearing them right now. You, you never know. Yeah, he, uh, it wouldn't shock me at all. Golski ready. Here's the pitch. And a called strike three. He got him. And that will retire the side. So two runs do score in the inning for the Vikings as they now hold a 3 nothing lead. Miller at the DH for today. First pitch taken upstairs, ball one. Tall dude, I'm pretty sure he's around six, two, six, three. Still can't touch the ceiling in um, my fourth block class. 
Swung on, grounded over to shortstop. Gloved easily, and the throw to first is in time. Another ground out. It's the fifth. Yeah, the only one to do so was Nate Schwartz, who flew out to center. So here is Casey Kaz. First baseman for the Knights today. He skies that one foul out of play. Not a very tall player for the baseball team. He's first baseman for a reason, man. Yeah, exactly. No balls and a strike here from Machowski. That's in there, 0 and 2. Nope. It's uh, Miss Kira's fly ball out to right field. That is a is it a fair ball? I believe it is. So it's a base hit. For Casey Kaz, his first of the year, and the Knights also have their first base runner in this one. That's the, that was right along the foul line, and I think it was just over. So, good hit by Casey Kaz. So, here is Jake Clark, the batter. First pitch is down low, ball one. And also, Casey Kaz is not the one who got that base hit, unfortunately. But it is Quentin Rosano with the base hit for the Knights. So apologies there. It's kind of tough to see the numbers out here. Swing the miss from Clark. As we are all the way out in center field, so we're doing the best we can with he was pretty tall too, so. the names. Yeah, that is true. He is very tall. He is the left fielder for the Knights today. That one taken upstairs. One down runner at first for the Knights. It's their first base runner of the day. First hit allowed by Michalski. That's a grounder over to shortstop. Glove cleanly throw over to first in time. Solomon moves to second base. Two down here in third, and it's going to bring up the leadoff hitter, Dean Collins. Dean Collins grounded out in his last at bat. Over at second base, Sterling looking to get at least one of the runs back. They surrendered in the top half of the inning. It's in for a strike on one. Here's the 0-1. That one in the dirt gets away. Rosano off to third. The throw is not in time. A nice job by Dawson able to keep it in front and not allow it to escape into the outfield. So now Rosano at third, here with two down. Collins with an RBI chance. Here's the pitch. That's in for a strike. Collins 0 for 3 with a walk and a stolen base in his last game. So grounded out in his first at bat. And a swing and a miss. Foul tip. He struck him out. Second strikeout of the game. Which is in for a called strike. On swung. Foul out of play. No balls and two strikes. Over to 
second, hit pretty softly, scooped up, throw over to first just in time. Four out number one, Spencer Haldeman is retired. So here is, I believe it's Rich Luliucci. Had an RBI in the second inning that allowed the first of the three runs for Eastern to score. One down here in the fourth inning and the first pitch from Gagulski. That one taken outside, ball one. Ball, no strikes. Here it comes upstairs. Two and up. Two balls, no strikes. That's in there. Two and one. Strolling about to be back in session starting Monday. Last three days of the third quarter. Yeah, me and you share Radio 1 class, so that will be done. And my graphic design. Yeah, quarter four of our senior year, so about two months from now we'll be walking in your situation, which is genuinely insane to be thinking about. That one taken upstairs. We have our Disney trip come up soon. Let's hope so. I'd rather have it outside than inside, to be completely honest. That one upstairs, ball four. So Luluchi walks. Is that his first walk of the day? No, it is not. It is his second. He walked the first batter of the day. He walked Denny Melillo to start the game. job doing it in the new gym. It was. That's in for a strike to Jack Bauer. Pretty much. I, I would agree. I was thinking like seven or eight. Swan grounded over to third. That's going to get by into left field. I believe that'll be a base hit. It gets by the glove of Collins. It's the second time that's happened today. Trying my best. That 
one taken down low for a ball to Matt Capriotti. He reached on an error in his last at bat. Two on, one down in the inning for the Vikings. They look at a nothing lead. They've scored one in the second, two in the third. And the pitch from Golski showing bunt gets it down. Throw over the first in time, and the sacrifice does work as it moves both runners over. So runners now at second and third with two down. So that'll take us back to the top of the order. It's going to be Vinny Melillo, who walked and has singled today as well. Second and third, two outs for the Vikings. Showing bunt, fouls it away. And I'm assuming if he does get the bunt fair, they're either just trying to load the bases up or trying to force a throwing error into a run or two scoring. Showing bunt again, pops it up, it'll be foul, 0 and 2, so. Most likely, Malou will be free swinging from here on out. They are probably just trying to get the bases loaded here. I mean, two outs, if you get a throwing error, you get a run scored. If the ball goes out of play, both runs would score in that aspect. And we've already seen a throwing error from Anthony Kogolski today. That one just missed outside. About halfway through, Sterling 0-1 to start their year, looking to get their first win of 2024. Eastern looking to continue their winning ways. They're 3-0 to start the season. That one swung on, fought off foul. One word to describe the game so far, it's just windy. Chilly. Very chilly. The, the sports around us have all been out for the most part. All the track shows have ended for the most part. There's still some soccer games going on. Yeah, pretty much just soccer to our left and then some JV baseball on the other field. That's a call of strike three. I believe uh, Sterling lost both those games, right? I think you're right. I, I don't quite remember, but it has been a bit. Memory's a bit foggy. It's in for a strike to Jason Camardo, who leads off this inning. Hockey? No. Yeah, that's a bit tough. I apologize to whoever's born up there. That one taken upstairs by Camardo. Yeah, it is fairly quiet compared to... It's very quiet in general as a, as a spring athlete. We don't get uh, a part of the yearbook. Uh, the, the spring supplemental has to be added. Yeah, that's, that's added in because the, the yearbook is due before the spring season is over. That one goes off the foot, back to third, throw to first in time. A circus play in the infield. As Camardo is retired, that's um, that's something I see in MLB The Show a lot, but I never thought that I'd be seeing that here this afternoon. I guess so. One heck of a kick by Michalski. Knock it off his ankle over to third base. A nice play over there at third by Dawson to gun it over to first for the out. And that'll bring up Tony Sanchez.
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how he's dealing with it with the cleats. I don't even know if it went off the mound. No, it definitely went off his foot. That's what I'm thinking. That was a wild play. That one just misses. It's one and one. Some much needed sunshine. Yeah, that sunshine does definitely help a little bit. Grounded softly over to third for Dawson. Throw over to first is in time. Two quick outs here in the inning. Here's Lomax, who swings and misses the first pitch he sees. It's nothing in one. Lomax grounded out back in the second inning. Sterling went down 1-2-3 in their halves of the first and second. Had a little bit going in the third, but nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, that, that, was, a, that was a big mistake. We apologize. Doing as best as we can out here, all the way in center field. Yeah, but the, this is live to tape. The connection just wasn't really working with us. Obviously, the wind is. Swing and a miss right there. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Got him with the fastball high and in to end the inning. A 1-2-3 inning for Machowski. He's got four scoreless inning nights today. Slow day today. Right. He only able to crew three hits yesterday, so slow start offensively, but hopefully looking to pick it back up. New pitcher in for the Knights as that's in for a strike. New pitcher for Sterling. Looks to be Vaughn McVeigh. That's in there, 0 and 2. I believe your Goldski finished out with five strikeouts. Is that correct? I can take a look one second. You're right, five strikeouts. Golski with four innings pitched. Rumble up the middle, that'll sneak into center field for a base hit. So Holloman is aboard to start the fifth. Sam wins it, the batter for Eastern. Pitch from McVeigh. That's in there for a strike. Arnold first, nobody out here for the Vikings. And that one outside. Wins set a single and a sack fly here today. And a pitch. That 
one swung on, driven deep out to center field. Going back, and that's going to be over the head, and that's going to go all the way to the wall. Running around third, they're going to try and get the runner home, and the throw is going to be cut off by Gagolski. It's an RBI triple for Sam Wentz at his second RBI of the day, and the Vikings will add on. It's 4 nothing. Easily the hardest hit ball of the day. I'm going over the head of Lomax out here in center field. Yeah, Haldeman was speeding around the bases, scoring all the way from first. That one popped up, goes foul out of play. As Schwartz kind of lost where it went. Cataldo is the batter. Wins it with that RBI triple. That's his second triple of the year already. That one driven out towards right center field. That's going to get down for a hit. It's going to be a bounce. As the run does score. It's an RBI single for Anthony Cataldo. And that'll make it 5-0 Eastern. is Logan Dawson. He takes line outside. Dawson has doubled and struck out here today. And again, if there are any substitutions of any sort during the game, we apologize if we miss any. It is kind of tough to see numbers out here. taken high and outside. Two runs have already crossed the plate in this inning for the Vikings. RBI triple and an RBI single. Triple coming from Sam Winsett. That one popped up out to second base and the catch is made by Camardo. Four out number one. So that's going to bring up Spencer Haldeman. He's grounded out twice today in the second and the fourth inning. Runner at first, one down for the Vikings. Sterling looking to turn double play here. That one just misses on the inside corner. One out. Phils are playing game two of a three-game set in Washington tonight. Here we win game one of that series, four to nothing. And they pretty much always have gotten out to a rough start, especially in the past couple of seasons. I mean, they lost two of three to the Braves to start the year, lost two of three to the Reds, and 
They won game one yesterday, 4 nothing against the Nationals, so they're 3-4 and four to start the season. Look to get to 500 with a win tonight. Yeah, a bit of a rough start for him offensively. I mean, I mean, Bryce Harper got off to a rough start as well and then went for a three-home run game in game two against the Reds. I was watching a Sixers game when that happened. It's in for a strike. It's been fun. I'm, I'm having a good time, honestly, and making the best with what I can with the weather. I mean, I there was one day where I went to the movies, and I spent the entire day there. I was there from 10 a.m. to about, I think, 9.30 p.m. That one's driven out to right on the move as Clark tore the line. He won't get there. Throw over to second base, not in time, so... A single for Spencer Hallman puts runners at first and second. What'd you see? Oh, I, I've heard about that. It looks, is it, is it scary? Um, it was pretty gross, I'm not going to lie. Okay. Like, it wasn't that scary, or jump scares that got me, but it was... Gotcha. I get you. But it was a very good movie. Yeah, it's part of the franchise, the Omen. It's the Omen. It's the Omen. I don't I know nothing about the franchise. I, I literally just I recently figured out that, that movie was a part of a franchise, like three days ago. Yeah, I did I have heard of it before either. When it goes from second, that one's Popped up foul territory on the move is Kazaneski. That's going to go out of play. Anyway, I saw four movies in one day. I saw. I started off the day with Godzilla and Kong: The New Empire. I watched that at 10:15 in the morning with a screaming baby in the back sitting behind me. That was great. The second movie I watched was the, the new Ghostbusters. After that, I watched Immaculate with uh, Sidney Sweeney. And then the fourth and final movie was Imaginary. That movie was horrible. <laughs> it was a... See the ads for it. It doesn't look that good. Oh, it, it was bad. Oh, oh that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Runners at first and second. Here's the pitch from... McVay, that one skied in the air and on the infield. And the catch is made. By Gagolski. was probably um, Immaculate with Sidney Sweeney. That was probably my favorite. It, it, like, from best to worst, it would go Immaculate, Godzilla, Ghostbusters, and then uh, Imaginary. Throw back to second, not in time. Yeah, the, the 2016 one, I, I wasn't a big fan of, and then I saw Afterlife, the first one with Paul Rudd and all that. I, I didn't hate that one. I thought it was pretty solid, but the one I saw a couple days ago was not very good. I was not a fan of it. But overall, I had a fun experience seeing all those movies in one day. That one grounded over to second. Camardo will just go to the back in the outfield because we haven't really seen a lot of that today until... Until then, it was an, a single by Haldeman to start it off and an RBI triple from Sam Winsett that went over the head of Lomax in center field. That one taken for a strike. I mean, Eastern is 
is just a much larger school too. So the fact that they're holding a five nothing lead right now, I mean, Sterling is facing a much larger school, a lot more talented players. So they're gonna have. still have plenty of games to go. I mean, it's not really about how you start, it's about how you finish. So, I mean, Sterling's still able to get six wins last year, obviously looking to improve on that. That's a swing and a miss. And Schwartz is down on strikes. I'm just not as familiar with baseball in general either. So, I'm not a fan, but I'm not too in-depth with I also played baseball for uh, about 10 years. <laughs> well, I mean, realistically, I only played one freshman game. I went three for four in that game. But I mean, I, I did get some JV time in my freshman and sophomore year. I think I played fairly well. I was a second baseman. I've been, I've played every position in my career, like ever, like ever since like coach pitch, I've played every single position. I've been a catcher, I've been a pitcher, I've played every infield, and I've played every outfield position. But second base, oh, you're basically him. pretty you're much. Gagolski down on strikes, round number two, but second base has been my, pretty much my home ever since. That was the position I got the most comfortable with. Especially in the infield, like, that's just the one that I kind of stuck with. Fun fact, I've actually turned a couple trip, uh, triple plays in my career. Oh, really? Yeah. And I've, I have two career triple plays. Not hitting, I've, like, defensively, I've secured that. That's going to be a base in the right field. To first, and it's not in time. Almost got him at first base, but Evan Miller able to reach with a two out knock. Yeah, I believe you're right because Evan is the DH today. So here's Quentin Rosano. Once one of popped up, that's going to be right up there. He's the only other knight with a base hit today. Single back in the third inning. It's realistically, a hit in the gap should score a run. That one's taken outside. You just got to find a gap. I mean, because their two hits have been bloop hits in the outfield. If you can get a line drive in this gap, that should score a run. That's grounded over to short. They'll flip to second base. And that will do it for the Knights here in the fifth. The ground outfielder's choice to end the inning with adding on to their lead. They scored one back in the second, two in the third, two in the fifth. Bob McVeigh in his second inning of work in the first pitch is upstairs for the ball. That was upstairs to Capriani, reached on an arrow, and so he it out. Third, scooped up easily from across the diamond on a hop, and he gets by. Capriani on his way the second he will get there. Again, I believe that was more on the 
flow from Collins, but depending on where the throw ended up, that definitely could have been picked by Kogolski if it was straight on a line. Again, from the angle we have, it's not the best, so we couldn't really tell if the throw was more offline or if it was straight over to Kogolski first. But nevertheless, it's an error as that moves people to be the second. And now it's Melillo, who has walked, singled, and struck out today. Shows bunt, gets it down, it's foul. Second time Capriati has reached on an error today. step off. Then overall, how was your spring break? What would you say? How, how was your spring break? Taken outside for a ball. That one swung on, found out of play. Walked, singled, and struck out. He was caught stealing back in the first inning. Runner at second. Nobody out here for the Vikings in the sixth. Yeah, Camardo had to go back to tag him out. The throw from Schwartz. He got it off quickly, it was just a bit offline, but Camardo made the catch, had to go back to tag him out. Overall, nice play. Swing and a miss. And Melillo's down on strikes for the second time today. Out number one here in the sixth inning. So that'll bring up Haldeman. Struck out. He's also has an RBI double and a single. Throw back to throw back to second. Excuse me. Nothing there. One down. Runner at second. Pitch from McVeigh. Swung on, grounded in the left field, a base hit. Rounding third, coming to the plate. The throw is cut off. It's an RBI single for Ryder Haldeman, and Eastern just keeps on adding on. It's 6 nothing. Of miscues right there. Nothing Collins could really do about it to try and get there as that snuck into left field. 
as Capriati was able to score rather easily. So now a 6 0 lead for Eastern. Sam Winsett at the dish for the Vikings. Winsett's had a good day. Single sack fly, RBI triple as well. No one taking upstairs. He is halfway to the cycle. So if you bet those in numbers, then you can give it to him. Indeed it is. He got the hardest part out of the way, but honestly today I think the hardest part would be getting one down. was him. Yeah, that was driven deep out here to center field. Lomax. For sure. Found it out of play. Eastern has a team looking for their first home run of the year. I, mean, I would say in high school it's a little more rare to see one, but fairly deep. I don't know the exact dimensions of the field, but it's got spacious. That one driven deep left field. Way back toward the wall. That ball is gone! Two-run home run for Sam Winsett. And Eastern is pouring it on. It is eight to nothing here in the sixth. That's unbelievable. A pretty swing from Sam Winsett. He is having one heck of a day. His fourth RBI of the game. Swing and a miss for Cataldo. I mean, Ben, we pretty much called it. Like, sort of. We were just talking about how he... If it was him, and he pretty much does it two pitches later. My home run call streak has been... Is up to three. I've, had, I've called three straight games with a homer. I'd say that's pretty impressive. Every single time you call the game, it's been a homer. That's inside. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not for story. But actually, the thing is, though, that is my first opposing team home run I have seen. Yeah, last year I was able to call a Christian Ruiz home run, and that one's hit pretty well out to left. Going toward the line is Rosano. That's going to go foul. But yeah, I saw a Christian Ruiz home run last season. Obviously, Ruiz not on the team anymore. He's graduated. He was a special player of mine for the last year. For 400. Yeah, he had three extra base hits in that game, two doubles and the home run. Sterling's offense really picked it up in that game. I believe they won like nine to two or something. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, not a lot of power behind their swings today. Just two singles blooped into the outfield for them today. And no matter what, they're still going to be strong against the Atlanta. I will say there was a little bit of a lull when the home run was hit. So it was like a big ball. Yeah, it was a great hearty cut from Winsett. That one fouled back. Catalbo is still battling. One out here in the sixth inning. Vikings putting up a four spot. Excuse me, a three spot here in the sixth. That one taken upstairs. It's eight nothing in favor of the Vikings.
grounder foul, third baseline. But, you know, you just gotta, you just gotta try your best to push through these errors. You can't have all these things happening because they're just working against you. And you need everything to play you games like this. Yeah, it's really all about taking it one step at a time in terms of improving things in the Defensive is definitely one of them. That's going to hit the helmet of Cataldo, and, and he's going to be granted first base, but not before. They're most likely going to take a look to make sure he's okay. He takes his helmet off. Yeah, it'd be way tougher to have a helmet blow off than a hat. Not with this one, man. It's all I mean, yeah, I mean. You never really know. We did. We yeah, we did. You're right. So Cataldo hit by a pitch. Still one out here in the inning. Brings up Dawson. Yep. Not much regard in human safety back with Babe Ruiz. Swinging on the diamond. Looks like time is called. Not quite sure what's going on. Umpire looks to go to. Looks like he's talking to. Yeah, that's Coach Rob Rob Christ, I believe. Got to talk to him a little bit before the game. He was giving me his lineup. Yeah, because... He told me the goal was a flow, so... Yeah, I mean, Mr. K, he was kind of impressed that we even wanted to cover this game today because he knew how bad the weather would be. And Get some baseball out there, especially because it's Sterling's home opener as well. Yeah. Don't take it outside. Like a lot of people do also decide to go away for spring break as well and everyone's down in forever. Yeah, but she's she's in South Carolina. She was enjoying the beach and the nice weather down there. Obviously we have some of our guys still in Europe. Yeah. yeah. They're in Rome today. Do you know when they come back? Uh, soon enough. Within the next couple of days, obviously. That one sharply hit past Anthony Gagolski at first in the right field. Throw over to second base is not in time. It's a double for Logan Dawson, and the hits just keep on coming for Eastern here in the sixth. Looks like 
Coach Tack has an esky talking to the umpire about something. My guess would be if the ball was fair because it was sharply hit down the line. But it depends, because it would have had to get by the bag in fair territory in order for it to be a fair ball. Once it gets past that, then it would be a fair ball, no matter where it would go. Looks like that conversation's done as Mr. K comes out for a mound visit. And it looks like... He is indeed, but during the spring season, also one of the reasons why Channel 19 is as active in the spring is because he is the coach for the baseball team. Yeah, like you said, we're trying to fix that this year. Yeah, for sure. I've taken uh, some time away from lacrosse. I'm still playing, but uh, I'm sort of splitting my time between that and Channel 19. So we're hoping to bring you, uh, at the very least, we're hoping to bring you Week or two. Yeah, we hope so. Once, once the spring season starts to really get. Yeah, once it starts to kick in the gear, uh, we're hoping to bring you as much as we can. Uh, and it will just be us. It'll be fully suited to run for the most part because. Yeah, pretty much. Maybe the occasional Shules visit, but. You never know. Because Jay Clark, other student announcer, he's he's playing baseball with Mr. K. He's out there in right field, rocking the shades. He's had a pretty solid game today so far. Made a few plays. That one swung on. That's going to go foul out of play. Yeah, by far the longest half inning we've seen today. Because Eastern erupting with their offense. They have an 8 nothing lead right now. Two runners in scoring position and only one down. Spencer Haldeman at the plate. He takes the ball outside. For sure, but it would be pretty tough to get a double play with runners at second and third. You'd need some sort of base running miscue from Eastern to get that. Found out of play. Haldeman grounded out twice, also single back in the fifth inning. Haldeman, a 500 batter going into this game. He's got two on, one down. Eastern has already put up three in this inning. That one taken outside. Eastern looking to add to that run total. Again, they've put up double digits against the Knights in four of their last five meetings. Base hit could make that five of their last six. Pitch from today on foul away again. Lengthy at bat here for Haldeman as he continues to fight. So in high school, there used to be a five-run limit, I remember, but I don't know if that continues into high school or not. 
I don't think it does. It's the fourth run of the inning for the Vikings as they now lead it 9 0. That's in for a strike to Luliucci. Again, my experience with uh, watching baseball has mostly been Lil Lee, my little brother. That one driven out the shallow right, and Camarda will come out to make the play and finally retire the side. Eastern gets four in the inning, two of them coming off of a two-run home run. Uh, the wind's picking back up as my pen's taking off. Jake Clark leading off four of the Knights. Clark grounded out in his lone plate appearance here today. for three in his last game. Hit 263 last year. 351 slugging, 12 runs batted in. That one swung on back to the mound. Throw over first is in time for out number one. They're getting a lot, they're mostly getting on top of it. And I mean, they're putting the ball in play which is good to see. But after a while, if you're grounding out on the infield, it gets a little frustrating after a bit. Yeah. And I'm sure at this point, it's pretty much gotten to that point. Dean Collins up to the plate for the Knights. He's grounded out and struck out today. very many hard hit balls by the Knights today. We saw a hard hit ball in the last half of the inning. It was Sam Winsett who had a two run home run. That ball was crushed. That one down in the dirt. Sam Winsett, very good game today. In his four plate appearances, he's singled, he has a sack fly, an RBI triple, and a two-run home run. That would go the opposite way and out of play. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's one double away from being the cycle. He's one double away from the cycle, which I don't know if we've ever seen that. I, cert I certainly haven't. Shallow out to right, and the catch is made for the second out. So the Lucci came in to make the play. So two down, that's going to bring up Jason Camardo. Yeah, base hit, anything really. Taken upstairs for a ball. That's in for a called strike of the knees. Some bullpen action here for the Vikings. First time we've seen that today. He steps off. He's had one heck of a game today. He's only allowed two hits. He allowed just three hits in his first start this year. It only went four innings in that start. So he's definitely... That was it pretty well. Out to left in foul territory. Catch is made. A nice play. As that will end the inning. That'll end. That's the first couple of innings. And then I think the serve broke down. And that ended 
six, I think. Yeah, that was when Vaughn McVeigh came into the game. Eastern scoring six runs off of him, two in the fifth and four in the sixth. That is Gavin McCormick. It's in for a strike. McCormick really just trying to get through this top of the seventh inning, hopefully scoreless for him. If the Knights want a chance for a miracle in the bottom of the seventh, as that was fought off foul the opposite way. the diamond in time. Great job by Collins to corral over there at third and get a nice strong throw over to first for out number one. That was a good defensive play by Collins. It took a pretty nasty bounce there. Yeah, it took a, took a hop off the edge of the grass, which kind of ate, ate him up for a second, but he was able to stay calm and fire it across the diamond. Swing and a miss. So one down, that's in for a strike. Still have some Little League soccer going on to our left. One of the games is wrapped up, but there's still another one going on near the tennis courts. Yeah, that's the far soccer field over there. JV Baseball has wrapped up. That's over to third, look at just fast. Going on. There was girls across. There was a lot of things going on. Very cold, very windy. Helen grounded back toward the mound. It went off of McCormick. Throw to first in time. A nice job by McCormick to stay with it. Fired over to first. Gogolski making sure he's okay after the play is. I think Coach Takazaneski will do the same as he took a bit of a shot on the mound. Nevertheless, it is out number two. It is Looks like my guess is that he'll be okay. I'm sure it's picking up more of the wind than anything. So two down here in the inning. And he went around. It's nothing in one. Sterling has not yet had a 1 2 3 inning today, and they won't get 9 0 in favor of the Vikings. First pitch taken for called strike. Still bullpen action going on for the Vikings. That one lined out to right field, that'll go foul out of play. from the Cormac now and taken outside. And 
that's inside. I believe that hit him too. So two straight hit batsmen after McCormick was able to retire the first two batters of the inning. And Lillo over there at second base. Pitch from McCormick. That one missed down low. Just a tough day overall for Sterling pitching in terms of getting quick outs. Probably been ahead in the count that much today. them is on the road I don't know for sure though do not quote me on that that's in for a strike to Sanchez I believe actually I don't believe I don't think that is Sanchez that is Ryan Romano Yeah, it's 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 a bit tough, especially with the numbers and stuff. Romano takes upstairs right now. That's on the outside corner. Sterling down to their final three outs here this afternoon, and they're a whole open. Strong plate discipline yet again today. Just when they do get the balls in play, it's really just not going anywhere, not finding any gaps, getting on top of it. Pitch from Tolman outside ball four. So Romano walks to start this seventh inning. It's also the first walk allowed by an Eastern pitcher today. So here is the Lomax. Takes ball one. First, nobody out here in the seventh. That's in for a called strike. Tolman looks back at first. Kicks and deals. It's in for a strike. One and two. Two strikes 
It's a loop low max. Mono at first, nobody out. Hit again here in center. And pitch, a swing and a miss. He struck him out. One down here in the seventh. So now one down, that one taken in the dirt. One ball, no strikes. One ball, no strikes, that's in there for swing and a miss way out in front. Pitch from Tolman. Skied out to right. Hit fairly deep. It's in foul territory, and that's going to go out of play. in the seventh inning. Romano waiting at first. Pitch from Tolman. Upstairs. Had to fill up the count of three and two. 